What's this? A shockingly somewhat coherent episode of WCW television during the dying days of the promotion, no less? Egads, what is the world coming to? I'm John Retham with the Retro View of WCW Thunder from January 24, 2001. Now, that doesn't mean this was a particularly good episode of television, but some of it was hilarious, some of the matches were at least okay to well-paced, and even though there was a really, really quick gauntlet match, in all honesty, this actually wasn't that bad of an episode. Now, it wasn't great, and there was the usual messy run-ins and all the usual interference bullshit, but shockingly, this Thunder episode blew by, and I actually was kind of enjoying it, and there was one particularly hilarious moment in the second match. So, Shivani and Tanae start off, uh, they talk about the change in ownership, you know, what's this going to mean for the future of WCW. Unfortunately, that means almost everybody's going to be out of a job in two months, which I felt bad for the people that lost their jobs that had to go to WWE or go elsewhere, but god damn, that company was just so fucking bankrupt creatively and everything, and even though they have some talent, I don't think anything could have saved it. Do you think anything could have saved WCW? Let me know in the comments. So, uh, it's a cruiserweight contender countdown, which is basically just a gauntlet match with ten cruiserweights, <clears throat> and yeah, two guys start off when one is eliminated, another one comes down and basically just goes back and forth like that, until uh, there's one remaining. So it's uh, Shane Helms versus Elix Skipper. And it was fine to start. It was only a couple minutes. That's the one thing. This was maybe a 15 to 16 minute, um, you know, gauntlet match. So that meant all the matches at the most two and a half minutes. So they hit a few moves, get in, get out. In the case of a couple matches, they were done in like 30 seconds to maybe 45 at the most. So Helms and Skipper had a nice little quick match here and Vertebreaker 1, 2, 3. And then Courageous comes down. And Evan gets laid out with the vertebraker right after. And then we get Helms and Kidman, which is good. Certainly wasn't, um, you know, that bad. They probably could have done better had they been given a little bit more time on Nitro or even a pay-per-view. Kid Crusher, one, two, three. And then Kidman uh, advances to face uh, Yang. And it was well-paced, well-worked, but quick. Uh, Kid Crusher off the ropes, one, two, three. And then he faces Jamie Noble. Um, driver off the ropes for two, and then we get a uh, Noble Tombstone, one, two, three. So Noble advances to face Rey Mysterio, who does hit a really, really nice Tornado DDT sliding under the bottom rope to the outside, and then hits the diving headbutt soon after to the back, one, two, three. Then he takes on Lash LaRue, who, he, he doesn't really have much of a problem dispatching, uh, dispatching Lash, that is, and hits a split leg moonsault, one, two, three. <clears throat> so... He takes on Shannon Moore and gets a bridge pin very soon after, one, two, three, and then faces Kaz Hayashi. And it was also quick, and Kaz got pinned with the uh, running Bulldog. So there we go. All right. That's pretty much it right there. And Ray advances to face Chavo Guerrero at Super Raw Revenge, that they're really goddamn plugging, not knowing that it was the second to last pay-per-view they would ever run. And then we get Norman Smiley, you know, walking down the hall. He's like, oh my god, like, what the hell am I going to do? i got to face a really big guy. I don't know what I'm going to do. Suddenly, he sees that Glacier is in his locker room. Uh, you know, a true hero has finally come. I will watch your back. And he's doing really cheesy laughter. They made Glacier more of a goof than he already was when he made his debut in, I think, September of 96. And he was a great athlete. And he did what he could, but the gimmick was shit. And then he had... This updated look that I'm going to talk about here in a minute. <clears throat> but first, Ernest Miller comes down with Miss Jones. They run down the card. Chronic versus Animal and Scott Steiner in the main event. Jeff Jarrett versus DDP. And just writing down stuff. And again, well, Pace, not a great show, but at least it was expedient. Nothing really dragged. That's not to say all the matches are good, but none of it really dragged. Also, I think they might have cut some stuff out. And with Thunder, I'm starting to think that there were some times where it would run two hours, and then there were other times they would just, you know, let it go like 80 minutes, but they would just add more commercials because they didn't have all that much to it. Or maybe they just added shit off the tapes. I'm not really sure. So Flair then talks to his guys about the master plan. Uh, don't worry, when the time comes, we will strike. We get Norman Smiley versus Mike Austin with Major Guns. It was a massacre for a while because Smiley just got freaking destroyed. Austin kept looking back to the entrance. Like, either Glacier missed his entrance, or somebody told Awesome that Glacier was supposed to come out sooner. And then his music hits. His music keeps playing while he's high-fiving the crowd, not having Norman Smiley's back. Norman gets a bit of inspiration and tries to come back, beating the shit out of uh, Awesome. That doesn't last very long before uh, Awesome takes over, uh, mugs him some more. Glacier keeps um, 
you know, the music keeps playing, he's high-fiving the commentators, high-fiving more people, awesome bomb, one, two, three, and then Glacier suddenly gets in the ring and does his pose thing, you know, his, like, uh, karate pose, or whatever the fuck it is, like he's gonna fight Mike Awesome, and then he says, I said I would be here to watch your back, and I, and I was, and I don't know what this was, he then does his pose and shoves Norman Smiley down, this was pretty goddamn ridiculous, I mean, this was really fucking ridiculous, so... It was hilarious, though. I don't know why I laughed at this so much. It, it, even the commentators were like, what the fuck is this? Fans, I don't know what the hell's going on. Then we get Luger and Buff saying, uh, hey, Crowbar, we're going to give you another chance to join the team. And then he faces somebody later. But who? We find out. Um, then we get Kui Wee with Paisley. I'm all man. He's But he's very calm. He wants to be on Flair's team. He's got the split personality thing where if you don't make him angry, you won't get Angry Adam. I think that's what they call him. Angry Adam sounds like a knockoff villain that Roger Corman would have somehow put in his version of the Fantastic Four. So he attacks a fan. I don't know actually who that fan was, but um, he destroys him, hits him with a pile driver, a safe pile driver. So obviously this was an independent wrestler or somebody that was trained at the power plant. And then Kui Wee's just like, you know, it's like, you know, I, I really want to be part of your team, Flair. So I didn't mind this. This actually could have gone somewhere. Except it's hard to take Kui Wee seriously. And then we get Jared talking about Chosen One. Yeah, 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 stroke around here. Whatever he strokes, he breaks a bunch of guitars, doesn't draw a dime. We get Jared versus Hugh Morris. I'm sorry, it's versus Hugh Morris. I confuse that with uh, facing DDP at Super Brawl Revenge. Excuse me, I reviewed a lot of this shit. I would like to apologize. Please forgive me. Um... It wasn't good because Hugh Morris's knees were shot, and Jarrett really can only work with some people that can help carry him, because Jarrett isn't really that great of a worker. He needs to work with somebody that can elevate him. Um, the wall tries to interfere, and then later hits a choke slam. Wall, Jarrett has a rep distracted stroke, one, two, three. And then Wall um, and Jarrett are about to beat, beat up Hugh Morris. DDP makes a save to hype up their match of Super Brawl Revenge. Crowbar with Daphne versus Ron Harris with Don. Dawn has the neck brace, but they use the twin magic thing later. Daphne has a megaphone and screams a lot. I like when she screams. I like Daphne. Um, Crowbar tried, and they do the twin magic stuff the Harris Brothers do. Spinebuster, one, two, three. I don't care about the Harris Brothers, but at least Crowbar is a pretty good worker. Bam Bam Bigelow versus Rick Steiner in 2001. This might have worked in 96, maybe 91. Not now. Um... Rick just tossing Bam Bam around a lot. Bam Bam was like for freaking Super Bowl. He did try, but he really was washed by this point. It was pretty sad to watch. Uh, two DDTs, overshot uh, Diving Bulldog, one, two, three. And then Flair uh, and his group leave this dressing room. Who the hell is it? Whose dressing room is it? We find out after Flair uses brass knucks to punch out Ernest Miller, because why not? Flair uh, runs the whole goddamn thing. We go back to the locker room. Nash and DDP are laid out. Rick Steiner's like, what the hell? Chronic, you need to go out there for your main event. And then Shane Douglas, because Rick Steiner stopped uh, Shane Douglas from beating Ernest Miller on Nitro, punches him out, but who's going to watch your back? You know, Shane Douglas trying to act intimidating in 2001. Animal and uh, Scott Steiner versus Chronic. Seven minutes left by the time the bell rang. And it was power-filled, a uh, hot tag to Clark, who, who did the meltdown to Animal. That was pretty impressive. Totally Buff and Ernest Miller run down, and then they get in a bit of a fucking brawl. Scott Steiner's out there helping, not helping his tag partner, even though Animal fought off, uh, you know, Chronic multiple times, got the high time, one, two, three. So yeah, Road Warrior Animal made this big return at Sin just a couple weeks prior, and he got beat. He just got beat. I mean, like, you know, just right there. Actually, it was ten days after that. He just got beat ten days after making his shocking return. Like, uh, revealing that he made his shocking return. But anyway... Steiner then lays his pipe all over everybody, get a beat down, and that's it. That's pretty much it right there. So overall, though, not a bad episode of Thunder. Wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. Agree, disagree, what I said? Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritland. I'll see you soon.